Job Hunting 101, providing you with the tools you need in your job search. Job Hunting 101. Thank you for tuning in to our Job Hunting Series 101 on transitioning careers. My name is Kelly Peltier and I'm a lead recruiter for the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance. Today I have two guests with me, Kendra Rusbach from New Horizons and Baron Johnson from Dale Carnegie. I'm the Director of Admissions for New Horizons Computer Learning Center and we are an IT training provider. We assist a lot of customers or job seekers that are looking to transition into new careers or have been laid off and looking to get back into the IT industry. So we offer a lot of training programs through Microsoft, CompTIA, and Cisco and other vendors. And our goal is to help students with identifying programs that would be beneficial to them, to getting into the IT industry, work with them on enrolling them in classes, uh, working with them while they continue in their classes and after they're done with their program, basically help them, helping them with job placement and getting a job in the actual industry. And I am Baron Johnson. I am a business performance consultant with Dale Carnegie Training. We have offices in over 80 countries worldwide, specializing in sales skills, uh, leadership development, communication skills, management, working with more than 400 of the Fortune 500 companies worldwide to develop their people to higher levels of performance. So we assist many organizations here locally in Tampa Bay at our office with that transition issue as well. Great, thank you. Well, as I mentioned today, we are talking about job seekers transitioning careers. Um, career transition can be a, a very emotional time. Um, what would you say to those people who are um, in transition right now about the emotional aspect of it? Well, I would definitely say that it's normal to feel anxious or to feel scared mm -hmm. if they're looking at changing careers or transitioning into a new career. Any type of change, whether it's positive or negative, is going to be stressful in and of itself. But with doing uh, research and preparation and looking at everything that they need to look at to change careers, I think that will help reduce stress and anxiety. And certainly uh, gaining the expertise of people that are in the industry, uh, having a support system around them while they're looking at changing careers, I think is going to be essential to getting through that anxiety and that stress level. Okay. Absolutely. I agree with Kendra. Also, I work with a number of groups, including Workforce Alliance and working mm -hmm. at Pinellas. What I've found to be effective for them is to keep busy. Uh, to sit around at home drinking coffee looking out the window is a great stress creator mm -hmm. as the time goes by and the bills come to you. So one key factor is we hardly uh, want to leave out the importance of creating a plan. And your plan for the week, for the day, might not go as planned, but it mm -hmm. does eliminate two key factors, indecision and a lot of worry. And it's also uh, always good to let people know, and we'll get into that, I'm sure, what you're looking for because so often word of mouth is the key deciding factor in getting that position mm -hmm. or even just getting the interview. So basically plan your day, schedule your days out, whether um, it be getting up at 8 o'clock to, to, or 8, 6 o'clock or whenever you normally would get up for work and plan your day accordingly as if you were working. Looking for work is a full-time job. Good. And for those that are already working and they may look at uh, the fact that they want to change careers, that's always a lot easier to do it when you are working because you eliminate the fact that you don't have to look for a job. You have the income coming in. So I think it's a little bit easier for someone that is working. They can take the actual time to do the research, um, plan out their weeks as far as what they're going to do each week to gain a little bit more research, a little bit more information, or talk with people about the new career mm -hmm. that they want to get into. But as Baron said, for those that are unemployed, you have to structure your days because you're going from a completely scheduled work day to being completely unemployed and there's that non-structure there. So mm -hmm. I think organizing the job search, organizing your research too, as far as who do you need to talk to in the industry, who do you need to reach out to, what you need to do to revamp your resume, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, those are all things that have to be worked on. Not necessarily all at once, but it takes time to do all mm -hmm. those different steps to effectively research the industry. Because the, the thing that you don't want to do is get into an occupation or a new career that you end up not really enjoying at all. Right. You know, you want to use mm -hmm. your money and use your time wisely and pick a career that's going to match your interests, match your values, and a career that you're going to be able to use your transferable skills. You know, we all have natural strength and natural skill sets. So we need to look at those, review what those are, and use them as we're looking at or as you're looking at changing careers. Okay, great. Uh, my next question is, how would a job seeker benefit for performing some self-assessments and skills? 
we work with a number of personnel at MacDill who are career military, and they have that same challenge at times. Very well educated, very able to handle a lot of different situations. They've traveled the globe. They are well adapted to different climates, cultures, scenarios. The challenge there is how to translate their skill set. For them to explain it, it's a foreign language. It's very technical and jargonistic. Um, the idea is to be able to convert what you know how to do into first civilian speak. And from there, what you probably, maybe you agree with Kendra is, it's so important to be able to make sure that your abilities are expressed in the right language for the specific industry you're going into. Because if you don't have direct experience in that field, they do want to understand what you have done that is relatable, that can connect the dots to where mm -hmm. they could see an easy transfer of what you've already proven you could do to a new arena of skills that you can easily adapt to quickly. Okay. So it's really, as you mentioned, narrowing down where you want to go so you can then hone your own abilities mm -hmm. to the verbiage that they're looking for mm -hmm. that they can readily understand because they're not looking to translate a resume. Right, it's got right. to be in their language. So, so they need to be looking for something that they can um, transfer their skills, their current skills to if they're looking for something in an, another industry or? I, ideally, because I think it's, it's difficult if you're looking to change careers and you have to h learn a whole new set of skills. Um, but that's why those transferable skills are, are necessary. And certainly, as Marin said, pick in an industry, one industry that you want to get into. I mean, for example, you might have been a manager in a corporate environment, and now you want to work for a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. So you're using all those skill sets as a manager, but you're working in a, in a totally different work environment with a different work culture, and that's fine. I think it's a little bit easier transition to, to do that. Doing the research on the industry, like I said before, is very critical, and there's a lot of great resources out there. Certainly, signing up for newsletters, industry-related newsletters. There's lots of blogs out there. We have an information highway, the internet, at our disposal, and I think people need to leverage that. Um, certainly talking to your family and friends, you know, telling everybody what career you want to get into, because you never know a family member or a friend or a previous coworker or supervisor could refer you to someone that's in the industry, and you can pick that person's brain. You know, informational interviews is a great tool. Not a lot of people know about them. They consider, well, interview is interview, it's for a job, not necessarily. Informational interviews are not for the purpose of finding out about a job or asking for a job. Its purpose is, is to find out about a particular industry or a job role. And what better person can tell you about that than someone that's working in the in industry, mm -hmm. whether it be the HR person or it could be a manager of that department. As long as you can get your foot in the door, you'd be surprised how many people would be interested in, in being asked about their expertise. People actually take that as a compliment. Ten dollar lunch can get you a hundred dollars of information. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, offer lunch or offer to go offer a cup of coffee and people will give you the time of day. I think it's it's very, very important to ask for those informational interviews. People don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean I've worked with a lot of job seekers and talked to them about informational interviews, especially those that are changing careers, and I actually give them a script. You know, what do you say when you call up an employer on the phone? How do you ask for that informational interview? And those scripts are important. And then once you get the hang of it, then you know what to say. Mm -hmm. You know how to introduce yourself. You know what you want to say, what kind of questions you want to ask, whether it be an in, on the phone informational interview or in-person informational interview. Also another great resource for doing research on industries or job roles within industries is ONETS which is an occupational dictionary online, and I believe the website is ownetonline.org. But that literally will give you information about any occupation. You type in manager, you type in help desk, systems analyst, um, accountant, and that will pull up all the information about that particular job. You'll find out about the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are needed for that job. You'll find out about the work values and work interests that someone would have mm -hmm. in that particular position, find out what education is needed, what type of training you need to get into that industry. Because as a career changer, you might need to look at the fact that you're going to have to go into some type of training mm -hmm. or get some type of certifications to get that particular skill set to be able to break into that industry. So there are a lot of resources out there. ONET is one of them. But it's a, it's a great tool, and I recommend all of my job seekers that I've worked with to use that not only for career research but also in revamping resumes. You know, as a career changer, you have to revamp your resume. If you are in accounting and want to switch to a different industry, 
you can't have a chronological resume because the employer is not going to understand why are you, why are you changing careers. Mm -hmm. right. you know, so revamping that resume is going to be an important piece of those that are looking for a different career. I had a young man call me and he's looking to get into television. So we met at a burrito. I said, make sure you bring your resume. He brought it. And I, I just I chuckled and he goes, what's wrong with it? I said, it's very well written. And he goes, yeah, my brother helped me. I said, was he in television? No. I said, what are you trying to convey? He says, well, that I'm, that I'm professional. I said, let's go for relatable rather than just professional. So we rewrote it. it took 10 minutes. wasn't long. He was surprised at how much we cut out. He had experience at Wendy's or McDonald's. He said, why would that relate? I said, well, they're not so concerned about knowing um, how to make food, but they are concerned about how well you handle pressure. How well can you meet deadlines? Mm -hmm. How quickly can you learn new skills? How do you adjust with stressful situations? Because that's very relatable to news. A couple of other areas where he uh, works at Walmart. What's it like during the holiday season? Very difficult. Right? Why? Because long lines of irate customers, long hours. Very relatable to television. Um, happy that he called me and said I got the interview. Great. And they had comments about his resume. Because you, know, you wanted to connect with their mm -hmm. needs rather than just your own experience. Good right. point. Right. And with a functional resume or a hybrid resume is, is the buzz term that's out there, that's a good resume format to use for career changes because it allows you to emphasize those transferable skills, also soft skills. Soft skills are very important as you're looking at changing careers because you may have those very relatable soft skills that fit right into the industry. So it's important to identify those soft skills, the transferable skills, but mm -hmm. also highlight the work history that you have because bottom line, employers still want to see what you've done. So as far as revamping resumes, hybrid resumes are typically the formats you want to use versus chronological or strictly functional. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, the purpose of a resume is to get a phone call. Right. The purpose of a phone call is to get a meeting. Right. You want to get face-to-face -face with that employer. And so we let them know that uh, we're a lot of HR personnel as portals for, for training and development of people. When they call you and you're able to just be yourself so that they know you are the person that's on paper, it's an old saying, no one looks more perfect than their resume. <laughs> mm -hmm. The idea here is if you do get the interview, you're already likely qualified for the job. They right. wouldn't waste their time otherwise. They just want to see two things. Are you really who you say you are? And would you connect and relate to their culture of people? Mm -hmm. Can they see you as a team member, spending right. eight or nine or ten hours a day with you five days a week? Does the personality fit the rest of the group that they would be working with? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Will it gel? Right. You've got the abilities. Now the soft skills come into play most heavily mm -hmm. there probably. Yeah, very good. Um, obviously, uh, LinkedIn is a great tool uh, for networking. What would you say to people who are in transition now, how, the, how they should change their page? One of the things that I would suggest, um, hopefully job seekers have LinkedIn profiles because it's almost essential nowadays that that is the uh, social networking site that a lot of employers look on as they're trying to recruit for job seekers, as they're trying to look for who to bring in for interviews. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, that's really considered a negative against you. So first of all, I strongly recommend for job seekers that don't have LinkedIn profiles, create one. And there are tools online to help you create one. There are staff at various you know, workforce offices that can help you or provide you information on how to do that. And if you already have a profile and you're looking at changing careers, that summary statement or the branding statement underneath your name is very, very critical. That summary where you can have a paragraph of information will allow you to indicate why are you looking to change careers? What can you bring to the table? You know, and, and as, you, as an employer sees a work history, they may look at the summary statement and then understand this person is changing careers. They have a passion for that career because of A, B, and C reason. And it's important to put that in there so people can understand why is this person after 10, 15, 20 years looking at a totally different in industry. And I think it's important to, to highlight again those skills. On LinkedIn, you can have various skill sets listed in your profile. People can actually endorse you for those skill sets. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that's as <coughs> critical as making sure that you highlight those skills that are going to relate to that particular industry. Okay. Knowing the jargon of that industry is very important. I think Baron mentioned that before. You know, in order to walk the walk in this new career, you have to first learn how to talk to talk. So you need to know the industry-related terminology, 
the jargon, and the only way you're going to be doing that is through your research and talking to people. And on LinkedIn, they have various groups that you can join that are industry related to that new career that you're looking into. Great way to find out about what trends are going on in the industry. Great way to find out about companies or people that are in that industry. Use them as the resources. You can even ask questions in these groups that you can join. Uh, let people know that you're looking for a job in that industry and ask for advice. How do I break into it? You know, what do I need to be able to get a job in this industry? So LinkedIn can be used for a uh, career <coughs> changer, but you, know, you have to know how to leverage it. Um, definitely following companies. You know, if you follow certain companies in your industry, again, you're going to see what trends are going on. You're going to be able to identify people that you might want to connect with that can assist you with transitioning into this new career. And those are just a few things. That's, that's some good points. I would also mention, if you have a Facebook page as well, <clears throat> make sure that there's nothing that would contrast or contradict on that Facebook page, what you've already tried to put on LinkedIn, because they're mm -hmm. going to check it out. Yeah, most definitely. And I, I think they want to make sure that their profiles are at 100%, mm -hmm. um, because employers are searching for candidates on LinkedIn. So I think the more buzzwords that, um, that they use on their profiles, the more exposure they would get. Would you agree? Absolutely. And there are certain things that you need to do to be able to be 100% complete. You know, definitely a picture is necessary. I don't mean a picture of you in a tuxedo. I don't mean a picture of you and your family. This is strictly a professional website. So basically a headshot or a little bit, you know, from here on up might be okay. But it's, it's necessary to create the profile being 100%. I'm having the skill sets, having at least three different jobs, um, having recommendations. I believe the requirement is you need to have at least three different recommendations mm -hmm. on your profile in order for your profile to be 100% complete. So if you don't have those things, <clears throat> work on getting all those pieces together so that you can have that all-star or 100% complete profile. And that way, when employers are doing searches for candidates to fill their needs or their openings, you're going to come up on the top of the list, and that's what you want. Great. Did you have anything to add? Just to make sure those recommendations are genuine. Yeah. Yeah, That they definitely. were checked out, that they actually know you. And a good thing about the recommendations is they're not automatically put on your profile. You have an opportunity once, a, once you request a recommendation from someone that knows of your experience, can speak of your work ethic, your work attitude, your work qualities, they will write the recommendation, send it to you, then you have an opportunity to approve it or ask for editor changes. So if there's any mistakes, any grammar errors especially, or if the person didn't quite say what you wanted them to say, you know, certainly you have an opportunity to uh, recommend those changes before that recommendation is put on your profile. Very good. Um, this would be a good question for you, Kendra. How does technology play a role in, for mid-career changers? Or, Yes, it plays a very big role, a very I, I think a lot of them are role. finding now that they're not, their computer skills aren't up to par. Exactly. Technology isn't going away. Technology is everywhere. Any industry, any company you're going to be working for uses technology to some degree or another. Now, we're not talking about being a technical support analyst and working behind the scenes. We're talking about, as an end user, just knowing how to use basic office applications, such as mm -hmm. Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. A lot of companies use Word and Excel and Outlook. So having that knowledge and being able to use those products not only will help you be able to get that job, but help you be more efficient and more productive on the job. So I encourage job seekers that don't have those office application skills, research you know, different training providers that can offer that because that's going to be crucial and essential. And there is a stigma, and I hate to say this, but some employers believe that the older workers or more experienced workers are not technologically savvy. So if you don't have those skills, but you know you need to get those skills, you enroll in training, you've had recent training, show that on your resume. Put that at the top of your resume because it will definitely be considered a strength or a positive thing in the eyes of an employer that's looking at your resume. Absolutely. If you don't have the training, it's easily and readily available. And if you are committed to that specific career, which is so important that you really do match yourself up with what you want to do to have that passion, um, once you have that goal, the rest is just a matter of time. Okay, good. Um, what would you say goes into the entire process? What should a job seeker do in advance when they have perhaps a list of companies they would like to work for or 
a certain title or position that they're interested in? Well, first of all, as far as picking an industry, uh, you definitely want to pick an industry that has growth potential, you know, that is going to be growing in the next five to ten years, that has job openings. Look at uh, the wage potential. Again, there is different resources online. Employee Florida is one uh, website. Well, you can do your labor market research. You know, talk to staff at different workforce offices if you're not sure about what occupation is growing, what's going to be in demand that's going to have openings so once I complete my training, I'll be assured that I can be confident that I'll have a job, you know, if I do my do due diligence <clears throat> in my part. Um, certainly allowing yourself enough time because this is a very competitive market. And it takes time to do your research, to skill up, to get the training that you may need to do to revamp your resume, cover letters. I mean, every time you apply for a job, it needs to be targeted. It needs to be a targeted resume related to that particular employer and that particular job. So one piece of advice I'd give to job seekers is give yourself time to do that, to make that transition into that career. But also the networking piece of it is essential. Talking to people in the industry finding out about that environment, finding out about the work culture. You may enjoy the job, but if, you're, if your values don't match those that are going to be involved in that work culture, that might be a difficult thing for people to adjust to. So I think just finding out about, not only about the nature of the job each and every day, but also finding out about the work culture, uh, wage potential, you know, some of the challenges that are involved in that particular job or industry, what are some of the positive things. Uh, finding out what type of training you might need to stay on top of that particular job or industry. Especially with IT, that's where I come from, technology is always changing. You always have to be learning. You always have to be willing to be actually a lifelong learner. So if you're not a lifelong learner, if you're not interested in always learning and growing and learning the new technology, that might not be the right industry for you. So doing the research, talking to people in the industry, scheduling informational interviews, that all takes time. And if you're working, that can be a challenge as far as finding the time to do all those different things. But if you pick two or three things that you can do each week, tip away at, the, at your list of what you need to do, I think it'll be more manageable and less stressful as you're doing that. That is a discipline, especially if you're working already and you're thinking, well, I do want to transition. It's so easy to put it off and put it off while you already have a job. Because what's really the factor here is what you do after 5 p.m when you finish your regular job, that extra little bit every week you talked about nibbling on, mm -hmm. it's a real commitment to prepare for that because mm -hmm. I've seen some who wait until their industry shrinks and then they get downsized. Right. Now they've got maybe 60 days of severance pay at best and they're really concerned about the holidays and what are they going to do because it's not the best time to look for work. Right. I've seen some as well get creative. Um, some internships are paid. I just helped another young man only because I knew some people and so he's got a year internship at a utility in the field that he wants to transition into. It's making more than he was making, and it's also working with him <clears> so he can go to class at the same time, and it's, it's worked out very well. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of internships that pay some $10, 15 an hour. It may not be full time, but it certainly can lessen the weight. Because when you're worried about how you're going to make your monthly bills, your brain turns to concrete, it's very hard to think creatively mm -hmm. sometimes. Right, right. Right. And this kind of goes back to the self assessment piece, and I think that. You know, it's very difficult to judge ourselves or look at ourselves objectively. I mean, we know inherently what our natural strengths and abilities are. I think it's very helpful, though, you know, when you can talk to family and friends that you trust on, you know, what do you think I do well at? You know, what do you think my strengths and skills are? Because I think it can be a real eye-opener. And it's important mm -hmm. to do that as part of your self-assessment. You know, sometimes we tend to be very hard on ourselves and we don't recognize always all those skills and abilities that we do have. So getting that feedback from family, family and friends can be part of that introspection or self-assessment process as you're looking at changing careers. And a great investment is a book that I was recommended to read. It's called Strengths Finders 2.0. In it, is a, they interviewed a million managers to determine what are the key strengths. They came up with 39, this was the Gallup organization. And then you go online and take an assessment. It's about 40 minutes. I was amazed at what came back. And what's really, I think, interesting is that when you get your top five strengths, it's, it really does hit home, and it is very revealing, mm -hmm. but that they can also be adapted to almost any industry. But when you know what your strengths are, you mm -hmm. know what to push, because they're only going to hire you for your strengths. Right, right.
So we and might as well go with the strong punch. Exactly. It helps you be more confident as you're approaching this new industry, knowing what you do have to offer. Uh, n not everybody has all the skills and abilities that employers are looking for. So one piece of doing your research is if you're looking at a particular job or role, look at the job descriptions that are out there. You know, look at what employers are asking for. What are the required skills that they're listing? What are the preferred skills? What type of training or education is required? That's going to be an eye-opener right there in and of itself. So just spot checking different jobs on various job boards is a very important piece of that research too. You're hearing it or you're seeing it directly from the employer what they're asking for. And when you tell them what your strengths are, no really body wants to hear a long list of virtues that they can rattle off about themselves. I'm reliable, I'm honest, I'm hardworking. They've heard that all before. <clears throat> what we really encourage our clients to do is to give examples. So when asked, how would you handle the situation or why do you think you're capable, actually give them a one or a half, maybe two minute account of where you did something similar in a different field that resolved that issue or was able to solve the problem where they can then relate to what you've done, already done, to what they would ask of you to do if you were on the team. So rather than just tell them necessarily why you think you're capable, give them a short narrative of how you've already demonstrated that strength. And we all have an encyclopedia of those. Um, any final tips that you guys would like to share with our viewers? Well, we have a website, tampabay.dalecarnegie.com, D-A-L-E, Carnegie, C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E, where we list a lot of our programs and you can also sign up for best tips. It's a free email once a week on some best professional practices that are useful for anyone in transition. And I would definitely recommend job seekers to use Employ Florida Marketplace. Mm -hmm. That is the state portal system where job seekers can register on there, basically put your information uh, related to your resume and look for jobs. There's also different tabs or links where you can review labor market research and statistics your information about various occupations that are demand in the state. Um, and as I mentioned before, using ONET, which is that uh, Occupational Dictionary Online, onetonline.org. Very good resource. Definitely recommend that to job seekers. And because my background is in workforce development, I do have a passion. I found my career in assisting individuals in their employment and training goals. If anybody has any questions about um, our center or just general questions and you know, about career exploration or transitioning, certainly they can contact me at my phone number, 813-387-3514. My email address is kendra.rossflock at nhtampabay.com. Well, that's all the time we have left today. Thank you for tuning in to our Job Hunting Series 101, Transitioning Careers. I'd like to thank you, Kendra and Baron, for being a part of our show today. Thank You're you. You're welcome. And we hope that um, the viewers found this information useful. The Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance and WorkNet Pinellas offer workforce solutions designed to improve your business. I've really valued my relationship with WorkNet Pinellas and have been instrumental in keeping us informed with new uh, educational trends. We've really seen our employees grow in their own personal development. It has not only exceeded Power Design's expectations, but our employees' expectations as well. To learn more about our no-cost programs and services, visit WorkforceTampa.com or WorkNetPinellas.org.